I'm Susan Harden, and I am a member of the Reverend James Caldwell Chapter of the National Society for the Daughters of the American Revolution who own this mansion. And I um, pretty much am in charge of the mansion itself. Whenever you uh, see a small letter D on an object, that object was here in the home when the Duncans were here. And in fact, I'm sitting on one, uh, by one of them. This table, for example, is a Duncan table. It was commissioned by the Duncans in 1834. The man who built it was the local undertaker, cabinet maker, Samuel Anderson. He built the sideboard in the dining room. He built the governor's bed that you'll see in the governor's bedroom. There's a large cabinet on the first floor landing that he built. Um, so several of the pieces in the home were his. And directly to your left, the chairs and behind us, the settee that are there, those are original Duncan pieces. And if you look at the legs of those pieces, you'll notice that they're very short. And the stairs, when you go upstairs, are very short. And that's because Mrs. Duncan was only four feet six inches tall. The governor, on the other hand, was six foot two. So it's kind of like Mutt and Jeff for the older people in the, in, that would understand that reference. But there's a lot of their furniture here in the home. The governor served Illinois from 1834 to 1838. He came here with his wife, Elizabeth Caldwell Smith, and she brought with her, believe it or not, if you were to convert the dowry he got when he married her to money today, it's over $4 million. And it's with that money that they're able to build this home. It was started in 1833 and finished in 1834. The outside of the house looks like his childhood home in Paris, Kentucky. And the inside of the house is very similar to uh, Mrs. Duncan's sister's home in New York. The governor actually dies unexpectedly, and he leaves Elizabeth. Um, she falls upon some financial difficulty and eventually rents this mansion uh, to the state of Illinois for the school for feeble-minded children. And a lot of people don't know that, that this was actually used for that purpose. The governor and his wife were very big supporters of education. The Duncans had 10 children, only three of which lived to be adults. Joseph Duncan Jr. ends up in Chicago as an attorney. Mary Louisa Duncan marries a Putnam from Davenport, Iowa. And there's the Putnam Museum of Science over there, and that's her family. And then Julia remains here in Jacksonville. And it's through her and her descendants that the DAR buys this home in 1920. At the time, they didn't have the $11,000 to buy it. Now, that sounds really cheap today, but back then that was a lot of money. So as you tour the home, you're gonna see marble tablets with names and dates. And what they did was they sold you a place on the wall for $100, and you could put the name of the first person in your family and the date that they came to Morgan County, and that's how they paid for the house. I started my career in Jacksonville as a public school teacher at the junior high. And my department was, um, able to put together what they call a historic walking tour of Jacksonville. And when we were doing that, our purpose was to instill in these kids a sense of the history of their community and the value of their community, because so many of them grow up and leave immediately, thinking, oh, there's nothing there. Well, there is. And when we were putting that together, we approached the ladies of the DAR and asked them if they would open their home uh, for our kids to go through, and they did. Um, and that's been 27, 28 years ago, and we still do. And initially, they uh, would bake cookies and have Kool-Aid. This was one of the best places for the kids to stop. And we hope it still is, but the goal is, and I think in any historic building, the significance of the past and what it meant to this community and what those people did for this community and how that gift of their doing continues yet in Illinois, uh, in Jacksonville, uh, I think it's, it's critical.